Hey Red Bags, it's Jade. Welcome back to a guide today, and I'm going to showcase every brand new weapon that got added in with the fully yoked last ever content update for Grounded. You'll have maybe seen some of the new game plus weapons that you get for each stage in New Game Plus, and the majority of these weapons are only available in New Game Plus. But what about all the other stuff? There are a ton of now infused weapons that you can get for defeating bosses, so I'm going to explain that and showcase some examples. But let's start with the stuff that you will be able to get without starting a new game plus. The Ant Queen Sceptar, pretty much it will summon a soldier ant to fight by your side occasionally while you're fighting enemies. It's a pretty terrible melee weapon, you really are meant to kind of use it to hopefully summon that enemy and then switch over to something else quickly to do more damage and help out. You can go ahead and upgrade it and what you'll get if you go down the mighty path is extra attack speed. Bearing in mind you can now go past level 9 if you've got enough fusion crystals but you won't be able to do this until you get to new game plus. So this is what it looks like fully maxed out statted. You can see not much of an increase. It does work on all the other mutation creatures that you can summon. So the Mant as well as Mum's genes and if you've got the Widow Whitling trinket you can summon the Widowling as well. So to get the Ant Queen Scepter you don't have to actually kill it as long as you go ahead and scan some of the pheromones. So if you befriend the Ant Queen, you can get that that way, or you can get it by poisoning, and then it's just simply ant parts, mandibles, and sap to go ahead and craft and make it. See, it's barely doing any damage at all. I'm just praying and hoping that we're gonna summon something to help fight alongside us. It does feel like it should be a guaranteed summon. I would prefer if you were to hold it down and then let go, it would always give you the fire ramp or give you an ant. So you can see it kind of upgraded, it does a bit more damage, but yeah, could definitely do the boost. Now there is a tier 2 repair tool, and this is what you get from the Black Ant Queen. Now technically this isn't a weapon, I'm going to show it off anyway. You get the Ant Queen repair tool if you go ahead and poison the Black Ant, or befriend it again just like the others. Now the repair tool is meant to repair stuff adjacent to it, so if you've got two or three squares made out of the same material and they're both damaged, then it should repair it all. And if you kill the Fire Ant Queen, you'll unlock the Ant Queen Staff. This is definitely a better weapon. You fire lots of goo, but you do have to hold it for just a few seconds to actually let go and does quite a bit of damage. When you combine that with the Ant Armor sets that you got, you could probably do some really good summer damage, but as well as being able to also fire off. And yeah, you're going to need a pheromone for the Black Ant Queen for the repair tool, and for this one, of course, a Fire Ant Queen pheromone and some other bits. So there's no bonus with the Ant Queen staff in terms of abilities. And here's what it looks like fully upgraded. Just look at the huge amount of damage. It is a two-handed weapon just like the other staffs, even though you kind of only hold it in one. And it should work that you get more damage output if you've got all the regular mutations unlocked. You could go ahead and equip it with a lot of the wizard stuff. I'm pretty sure it should do similar. Though I'm probably going to test that out a little bit more thoroughly. And the best way to use it is to carry on holding it when you've actually depressed it. Just about got five shots out there. Next up we've got the Infected Ant Spear. This you'll only get once you begin New Game Plus. You can poison or infect an Ant Queen. You'll find the Red Ant Infected Poison recipe pretty much inside the Hayes Laboratory, just inside the piping. And so if you do that before you begin a New Game Plus world, You'll kill it, and then in the New Game Plus world, she'll be back where she was, this time infected. And when you go and feed her a hoagie, she'll then give you the recipes for the shield and the spear. And yep, it's pretty effective. So it's nearly three damage, half a stun, and pretty good at speed. It's pretty much just similar to the rusty spear, but if you hold it, you can do an explosive charge attack. If you upgrade it down the mighty path, you get final damage, which will basically give it the third hit combo that spears don't normally have but a lot of other weapons do. See, huge amount of damage there, max damage. And it's literally shredding this Black Ox Beetle at max upgrade. But again, only if you've gone ahead and used the Fusion Crystals to do so. You won't be able to get them until you've got into at least New Game Plus 1. When you do go ahead and infect the Ant Queen, so if you're playing New Game Plus 1, you'll find the recipe to infect the Black Ant Queen. And when you jump into New Game Plus 2, you'll find the recipe to infect the Fire Ant Queen. So all three of them, you will gain access to this, the Kilbasa, at the brand new crafting station, the Sausager. So that's some of the stuff that you can get before New Game Plus. 
and then what happens afterwards. So on to the elemental weapons. At tier 1 of New Game Plus, you should find in the ASL shop you're able to buy the Sal Katanga, the Breath Slayer, the Frosted Flake and the Wallapino. These are all 25,000 raw science to go ahead and buy the recipes for. The Sal Katanga is going to give you more Sal damage built in, the Breath Slayer fresh, the Frosted Flake fresh as well and the Wallapino should be spicy. To craft these you're going to need the new the Duper Jelly. That's what you get from dismantling trinkets when you swap the mode over and then you can craft it at the yoking station but you will need to spend 50,000 more science in New Game Plus to buy it. And you do also need to kill a New Game Plus infused broodmother boss as it does require that to actually go ahead and make it. Plus more of the Z-Duper Jelly, Supreme Plating and Supreme Whetstone. So even before you can upgrade any new weapons or unlock any of the other stuff, you're going to go and have to fight an infused boss. Good luck with that. So there is a bit of controversy with these weapons. Once you get to New Game Plus 2, you'll unlock the ability and the recipes to get the Blazing Edge, the Pepper Flake, both of which are spicy, and the Pucker Fumper and the Tingle Tongue, which are both sour. But a lot of people are kind of upset that a lot of the weapons kind of are really similar and same, with the only difference being some of the looks. Frosted Flake is probably one of the better actual axes to go ahead and get. And if you actually take a look, and if you take a look, the items that you get in New Game Plus 2 are pretty much similar or same power. Both axes are pretty much 6 damage, likewise the Frosted Flake is 6 damage. And for some reason we get the choice between two spicy axes, but exactly the same stats. And that continues. By the time you get to New Game Plus 3, you'll be able to unlock Fresh Edge, Pickle Maul, the Sizzle Striker, Fresh Coltana, and the Salt Chipper. Again, these should all be around 25,000 raw science to buy the recipes for, but this axe is exactly the same as this one. If you was wondering if there was maybe some differences when you go ahead and upgrade them, and you still get Final Fury. So it makes a lot of the following weapons just not really worth getting unless you particularly like the look. Like it's a cool looking axe, sure. But if you want a fresh axe, you're probably going to go ahead and get this one because it'll unlock in tier 1 of the New Game Plus rather than waiting until tier 3. So with the Frosted Axe, you do get Final Fury. You get an increase of attack speed when you get in your free hit combo. With Breath Slayer, You'll be able to get the final hit in your free hit combo increases your perfect block window and then perfect blocking while this buff is active increases the damage on your next attack there are no additional benefits other than just making them stronger for getting it up to level 15 you don't unlock any new abilities the wallapino will give you an aoe effect shockwave once you've done your third combo hit and the sal katanga that's going to give you the final parry as well so a lot of people kind of want these to be a bit different. It's pretty much the same buff that you'll get with the regular katana. Like they're going to be great weapons for sure, but it does make some of the other ones a little bit useless. But let's go ahead and upgrade them anyway just to show you. So Final Fury again. So no difference between the two axes here. And none of these are one-handed weapons. They're all two-handed. The Pickle Maul, you're going to go ahead and get Final Aftershock. Sizzle Striker, Final Aftershock. The Coltana Final Parry, with the only really unique one being the Salt Chipper. This will give you Final Bleed, and it does actually act like a club, so you will be able to go ahead and harvest Stone. You can see it acts just like a Tier 3 Hammer. So that's pretty cool, that's at least a Hammer and a Weapon, as it's relatively quick as well, and you'll be able to apply Bleed to your enemy with the third hit combo. So, the Lowdown. Soon as you get access to the tier 1 weapons, it's definitely worth getting the Frosted Flake. The stun and the combination of damage just makes it the better weapon out of all of these. Especially as you've probably just defeated the Broodmother, so you won't need a spicy weapon to take her on. So there's no point in getting the Wallapino, and wouldn't advise taking on any of the other infused bosses until you've got the Yokin Station up and running. At stage 2, well maybe you could go for the Pepper Flake. Again, you're going to have pretty OP power and stun. Like I said earlier, it all just depends on what you want to make your axe look like as you get the choice really between Blazing Edge and the Pepper Flake. There's probably not much point in having the hammer because you probably have got your Sour Edge or Acid Edge as it's called now already from defeating Schmecter and the Tingle Tongue, just like the Great Antlion Sword, is kind of weak sauce. And then the third option and the third set of tools, you probably don't need Fresh Edge if you've already gone and made Frost Flake. 
Likewise, you probably won't need the Seal Striker since you may have already gone ahead and got the Wallapino. Literally no difference between these two, yet one of them you have to wait until you get to New Game Plus 3 to go ahead and be able to buy. Maybe this will change, maybe this was an oversight and things like this are going to be adjusted, but that's where we're at. So that's all the stuff that you get from the Science Shop. What about the Infused Weapons? These are pretty much unique chances to drop when you go and take on any of the bosses in the game, but only available once you reach New Game Plus 4. So starting off with the Broodmother, you will get a 25% chance after defeating it of getting a random drop of one of these daggers or potentially infused club. Big difference is that these daggers are all the same. Obviously with tier one, tier two and tier three, there were big differences in how they went up and what kind of damage they did. Well, not that much, but they kind of meant to, with the Widow Dagger being the most noticeable compared to just the Peblet. But infused weapons, they're gonna be exactly the same. So you can only get these through defeating the Broodmother. The infused Dagger, you can see it's double the amount of damage of a regular Pebble. And the best bit is they all come with attributes and these can be re-rolled. Keep fighting the Broodmother and you'll get different drops of different infused daggers that may have a different new buff on it. So effectively making it that these daggers, it's all just about the look, what you prefer. If you want a nice glowing Black Widow dagger, you can go ahead and use it. Or the Peblet dagger, and it's gonna do exactly the same damage, exactly the same stun. The only difference being the special bonus or buff that it's got on it as well. And yes, you can go ahead and dupe these and mix up and change what they have on them. It costs 15,000 to duplicate any of the daggers. If you upgrade it, then it becomes a little bit more expensive, but not much. A maxed out one here you can see is only 16,500. But instead of summon poison now, I've got attack stamina. Likewise with the clubs, I think these have got about the same amount of chance of dropping, and you might get a buff like the quickness, was queen damage, and a lot more. So now that's explained, I'm just gonna rattle off through some of the other bosses a bit quicker. The Mantis, it's gonna be axes. So go and kill the Mantis if you want your chance to get infused axes. Randomly, I've got Black Widow damage here. Infected Broodmother damage. And yes, you will have a chance to get an infused Scythe as well. It does look like the higher tier weapons might have slightly better chance of getting better stats, or at least the boss ones do at least, as I've never seen an implant weakness on a lower tier weapon, usually only on tier three trinkets, and now this Scythe. The Woz Queen is all about your bows, so yes, you could be running around with the most basic looking bow, and it'll just be just as good as a infused bow. Particularly good if you get a chance of getting a crossbow, you'll have an additional new attack on these. So yes, you can get new special bonuses added to bows too. Now obviously some attributes aren't necessarily gonna work, like this is meant to have final goo on it, and there's obviously no combo hit with a bow. So yeah, that would be a pretty poor roll if you did manage to pick this up. You definitely wanna dupe it and see if you can get something different. You also get unlocks from the Mant. Now this is a bit more difficult because the Mant only appears once in New Game Plus. So I highly recommend you save and load and see if you can do some save scum just before taking it on if you want a chance of getting an infused hammer. You also have a chance of getting the infused greatsword. Not gonna lie, salty attack on that's pretty cool. So yeah, that'll probably be the hardest to get hold of is something like that. And with the hammers, it's just gonna be exactly the same. So it doesn't matter if you get any one of these other than just the looks. Director Schmetzer also has some unlocks. You'll get the spears from him. But again, just like the man, you're only gonna have one chance of getting some of these since they won't drop, since you can't repeat the Schmetzer fight until you've gone into another new game plus. So save scum in for the win. And if you really don't wanna infect any of the ants, it could be a way to get the infected spear as there is a chance of pulling off the infused infected spear here. And finally, with the Infected Broodmother, is your chance to get a Infused Sword or Blaster. So Lava Blade, Black Ant Sword, Shimata, and the Makahuni, you've all got a chance of getting it. And then an Infused Blaster. You can upgrade all of them Infused Weapons as well, all the way up to level 15, but you won't get any bonuses with them. But you course can make some of the other weapons, the melee weapons, different elemental flavors. So if you was hoping to get two maybe bonus things from some of these weapons that have that, think again. I was wondering if the Termite King and the Assistant Manager had chances of dropping maybe infused weapons, but it doesn't look like it. And there you go, that is it. Almost a reward for each stage. 
New game plus one, if you've done it right, you should be able to get the inflected shield and spear. And of course, the brand new candy weapons you can get from the ASL shop. In new game plus two, another selection of them weapons. New game plus three, the final selection in the burgle shop. And new game plus four, a chance to get infused weapons. After that, it looks like there's no real point in carrying on. There doesn't seem to be any kind of reward for getting to new game plus five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or anything else unique, just to be about you dominating the yards, maybe picking up some more mutations or gold cards that you're trying to get. So are you going to be doing it? Are you going to be trying your hardest to fight against the infused bosses? They are going to be no joke for sure. If there's any changes made to them, because there probably will be a balance patch, I'll keep you guys in the loop. Until then, I'll see you rat bags later.